What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another Python tutorial. We're looking at N curses, curses, and unicurses all in one beautiful package. And pretty soon, we're actually uh, don't tell anybody this is going to be a secret. We're, we're going to be splitting off and trying to see how the unicurses function, the unicurses library actually really kind of differs from the curses module. But hey, that's a sneak preview. Don't worry about that. We're going to be getting that really, really soon. But for now, I want to be teaching you guys something new and something cool. It's simple. It's easy, and what it is, or what they are, I guess I should say, are lines. Right, we're gonna be making lines, and it's it's very very simple, very easy to do in curses, and the way it's done are with uh it's it's done with two functions anyway. One of them is called H line, and the other is called V line, and I'm sure you guys can guess what each one does. So H line creates a horizontal line, V line creates a vertical line. Now. Unicurses is set up in a way where H line and V line only take two arguments. But in the original curses module, there is a way to um, actually call the function with four arguments. And the other two arguments are actually a set position for the line to start at. In unicurses, we can't do this. We have to create our we have to use the move function to move the cursor or where the where the line's gonna start from before we actually call the function. So uh, let me show you what uh, what I mean by this. If, if we were using the curses module, uh, curses module, we would probably call the function with the setup h line, and then let's say we want to start at three down, two forward. The character we're going to use for to actually create the line is just a dash, so it looks like a horizontal line. And we're going to go ahead and create about ten of those. So it's a it's a line that is ten characters long. That's that's the length. That's n in our case. Now. The unicurses module does not do this. It does not allow us to move to that position while we're running the function. We have to actually set it up as to move to that position by ourselves. So we can use 3 and 2 there. And that'll, that'll do whatever we need it to do. And that's how it would be done. Very, very easy, very, very simple. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you that this is a doable thing. I'll get my terminal ready. I will uh, go ahead and run the main program here, and boom, we've got our player, we can move around a bit, and there's a little bit of a line right over there, right exactly where we wanted it to be. Now, if you haven't moved the coordinates from the first time that you run your program, it's very, very likely just going to start up at the top left, because the coordinates start at 0, 0. So, we can do this with V-line, of course, do the exact same thing, I'll move it down, run it, and you still get that thing here, but I didn't really change it to be a vertical pipeline, so it doesn't look as good. So let's change that. We get that here. Nice, nice. Now, we can actually also supply um, specific characters that are n-curses like, built in by default, or what we would use for an h-line or a v-line. Let me show you how you can do this. Unicurses uses like special characters or even integers or, or a constant to represent what the shell would use by default when it's creating a virtual line or when it's using like the box, uh, the box function. So that's actually called, or we can reference that by ACS. Now these are these are all capital letters here. ACS and V line is what I'll use here. And we'll go ahead and write that there. Okay, so on my shell, it's it's the same thing as we just saw with the with the pipe. But let's create a, another one. Let's say an H line, and I'll use the H line function. Run that. Okay, and then it creates that right there. And it's it's not a dash, but instead it's the actual line character that it would be that would be used with if we were using like the box function. So that's how it's done. Uh, it's very, very simple. You can pass in whatever actual character you'd like in here, like the letter A even, um, letter B. It, it can be anything, and that's just the way it's done. You can move around with your player because we've imported that like functionality, but okay. Now, you can tell that you're actually using the standard screen here, and maybe you want to actually add some color to these lines. Well, um, we can't just go ahead and, like, add on the color pair in this case, because you're concatenating an integer and a string. What you have to do is, remember, use those ATR, ATTR on functions. So, I'll just say color pair. Now, I know one exists because we're using that for the player, and then I'll, I'll turn that on, and then I'll go ahead and turn it off at the very end once we've done that. And now we can use this functionality to actually create things with color, and you can actually 
add some attributes to the, what it is that you're creating a vertical or horizontal line with. Okay, so <laughs> uh, I think that's all I want to cover. That's how it's done. It's different from the unit curses. It's different from the curses module. Sorry, but the um, the curses module still has support for only if you pass in these two arguments. But it does allow you to pass in y and x. But since we're using unit curses right now, we're going to stick with this a and b and only move whenever we need to um, put the line at a different position. Uh, you're going to have to do this depending on the screen that you're working in you or, or a window, but I know you guys can figure that out when you're doing it. <laughs> okay, thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. H-line and V-line will come in handy for some of the stuff that we're going to be doing later, but I just wanted to introduce this concept to you. Talk to you all later.